the portal is not even open yet, and we're already having a tampering, excuse me, transfer Tuesday on the podcast daily. That is Bill Landis. I am Austin Ward. And uh, we did not hear directly from Dallin Hayden, but 247 and On3 Sports both reported on Monday that Dallin Hayden uh, would be had informed Ohio State that he would be entering the transfer portal when that opens next week. So we've not heard from Ohio State directly, not heard from Dallin Hayden directly, although he uh, was responding to some messages that appeared on social media indicating that that decision was made. So it doesn't seem like, Bill, that uh, he will be practicing for the rest of this week, the final week of um, spring camp for Ohio State. And weirdly, there are already places and destinations that seem like they've got the inside track to Dallin Hayden, who's not even in the portal. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird how that works out. Um, that's that's like you know that's the state of play now. I don't. You cannot like it. I don't. I don't know that it's like overly nefarious, but uh, <laughs> but it is. It is the way the college football has gone. That um, you know, guys guys sort of know where they're going or have an idea of where they might be going uh, even before they are officially uh, transferring. So um, it seems like Dallin Hayden could have a couple of good options for himself, uh, but one of those will not be Ohio State. Yeah. So. What's the initial takeaway for that, Bill? Like it, he's third on the depth chart. When we got ready for spring camp and spring practice, I think you and I have both been really high on his ability, and mm-hmm. he was going to, even if he was not going to take a ton of carries away directly from Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson, that there was a role for him to play and a bright future, and the chances that he's got to play. I know we've been pretty high on his ability. Uh, but it just it didn't translate. He had the red shirt last year, and now that decision seems even stranger uh, in hindsight than than it already was because Ohio State doesn't get the benefit of this and somebody else does. Yeah, I, I I'd be lying if I said I was surprised, right? Like I, I as I, I guess the mere fact that Dallin Hayden was on the roster at the start of, start of spring practice certainly in my mind increased the chances that he would be here in the fall. Um, but once Tony Alford left, like I, I thought there might be some movement in the room um, or maybe. If Dallin Hayden had been thinking some type of way prior to that happening, and then let that happen, like if that were the final straw, then I don't, I don't know that I'm, that I'm floored by that. Um, it's, it's, it's a deal worth paying attention to. I think, like he's a, he's a really good running back. I think wherever he goes, I think that team's going to get a, a solid back who is capable of starting. I think probably at most power programs, including Ohio State. It just so happens that Travion Henderson and Quinchon Jenkins are here. And if Dallin Hayden didn't want to wait around for another year being at best the third option, and I think he would have been right at I don't think he was in jeopardy of either of the two freshmen, James Peoples or Sam Williams Dixon, cutting into his snap count. But it's also maybe fair to ask yourself, like, how much is going to be on the table when you have two backs like Travion and Quinshawn are already on the roster? Um, I, I kind of thought that that maybe the answer to that question could be more than you think because of the length of the season. Um and the fact that they redshirted Dallin Hayden last year, so so obviously they couldn't do that again. So maybe there would have been more opportunity for him that way. So I don't know. I guess I guess I'm of two minds. Like one, like no, maybe not even two minds. Maybe it's all one one coherent thought. But <laughs> uh, it's been a long weekend. Sorry. Um, oh yeah, what'd you do? Yeah, what the uh, what the, the showcase of the Immortals uh, of <laughs> Philadelphia? Yeah, um, I think it's like it's it's something that Ohio State needs to address. Right? It's not like a. It's not like a red flag, oh my God, what are they going to do kind of departure. But I do think they probably need more depth in the running back room now. And, and you know, on the other flip side of that coin, I guess, like, I kind of get where Dallin Hayden's coming from because I, I think he is probably too good for what would have been available for him at Ohio State this year. Yeah, I don't... I don't mean this to sound, like, naive to the new age of college football because I certainly understand it very well. But, or at least as well as I possibly could, I guess. Uh, When Dallin Hayden accepted, and he talked about it again last week, which is another part of what I'm going to get to, you know, accepted the red shirt and the plan, and then decided to stick with Ohio State through the winter transfer portal window. I thought, okay, well, he is really committed to whether that's the idea of the brotherhood to a plan down the road combination of both all things living in columbus whatever he wants to play for the buckeyes and is willing to make some sacrifices or give some things up in order to do so and like if he wanted to leave i thought he would have done that in january now certainly the situation can change 
I understand all that. Change your mind, change change an offer that you might get. Uh, I understand that all those things can happen. Your position coach also leaves. And Tony Alford was obviously pivotal in having those conversations about the red shirt a year ago and in the development plan and getting him ready. But it just it felt like after all that and then not declining to talk with the media last week, which he certainly could have, coming out for a media session when he knew what some of the questions were going to be about. I was like, okay, mature uh, approach here, knowing that, must be committed to that decision long term. I think that's the surprise for me yeah. is going to the, to the start of the week. It's like we just talked to him five days ago, and it was like everything is still on course. Um, now, it could have, could have been in the works for a lot longer than that. Uh, he wanted to see where he stood through two-thirds of, or almost all of spring camp, really, before making that call. And I, I, I don't fault him for making that decision in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying that it felt to me like there were a lot of signs pointing to him being you know, wanting to stay. I don't, I don't want to use like I, I don't want to frame this as like decommitting or doing something wrong. I don't think mm-hmm. he did do, do anything wrong, but it felt like all right. He is fully locked in here for the foreseeable future. That's that's the surprise for me. Yeah, the timing's odd, I think, right? Given the given the context of everything you just said. It's not the decision itself, I don't think is surprising. Like it it kind of coming out now as opposed to him just like running out the rest of spring, maybe even like <clears throat> I don't know, having a good spring game. I, I maybe he doesn't need it. I I guess like there's probably enough on film already of Dallin Hayden for teams to know what they would be getting from him, but there was certainly an opportunity for him to like, I don't know, be like the star of the spring game. Maybe I don't know if that mattered to him or not. And that could have, you know, boosted his, um, <laughs> earning potential. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe as he, as he looked at opportunities, um, in, in the transfer portal. Um, I also think that maybe Dallin Hayden is not the type of person to concern himself with, um, like the, the, the optics, I guess, maybe that's probably not the right word, but it's the only word that comes to mind of like doing a media session. If you kind of knew you were already leaving, like he, I think he just like sits down and answers the questions and then leaves and <laughs> like that doesn't, doesn't put much more thought into it other than that. And I, I think that's okay. But him doing that, I do, I do think projects some stability to your point, right? Which, which does make this a little surprising. But I, I, I don't know. This is just as me guessing, or you, you said it like we haven't really talked to down, we haven't talked to anybody. And I also don't mean this to re- reflect poorly on Carlos Lachlan, the new running backs coach. But I, I really just think like the Tony Alford decision to leave, like probably was the nudge that Dallin Hayden needed to think that he needed a fresh start somewhere else, which again, I don't necessarily fault him for. Um, maybe it just, I don't know. It's not his fault either. The Tony Alford decided to leave in the middle of spring ball, right? Like, like certainly there is a, there's a better um, alternative to this where maybe he decides to do this in the winter in Ohio state has more time to adjust to that. And look for another running back um but i still think they can find a depth running back even even after this so i don't think it's all that detrimental to ohio state at, at least in terms of like being able to fill the roster hole i don't mean to say like i don't think dallin hayden's a good player because because again I, I do think he is but um it's just it's just a weird thing like I, and who know like plans might change too right he might have sat down with us last week fully thinking that he was going to be here and then who knows who gets into his ear and says like hey you could have this opportunity here here or here and then you kind of rethink where what you might be doing moving forward. So it, it's odd. I, I I don't not not like a bad way, just in like a what are you going to do kind of way. I think the oddity even spills over to the fact that like if we're if we're going to assume that Tony Alford's decision to leave is some part of this, and it it may not be at all. If it is, like that's the guy who decided playing time the last couple of years, and I think clearly. Dallin Hayden would have expected to play more, especially after what he did in the November of his freshman season, where it was like, holy cow, Ohio State suddenly stumbled upon another ready to go true freshman weapon. And it didn't, it didn't happen. And we heard a lot of things, and it was difficult to pin down Ohio State fully on this, where it was like, uh, it seems like ball security. That seems to be an issue in practice. And then last year it was a little bit more of like, um, you got to be able to pick up blitzes and like, you know. I think that's got to be frustrating for somebody who picks up yards and scores touchdowns every opportunity he gets to actually go out and play at running back and do the things that a running back, uh, you know, wants to do with the football in his hands, mm-hmm. and and then that's why I thought like, well, maybe there's another element here of all these things that seem to be trending in the direction of staying, 
uh, at least from the outside, it's like maybe the fresh start that Dallin Hayden needed was just Carlos Lachlan coming in. And all those things, I don't know. I can't, only Dallin Hayden can answer that. And he didn't even really seem to be hinting that that was on his mind. He was talking about belief that he could carve out a role, even with Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson on the roster, and that he believed he was you know, capable and that he would be playing in some capacity for Ohio State this season and that he hadn't lost any confidence in his future. But again, that's that's nothing more than just trying to come to terms with something that you know, maybe wasn't all that difficult of a decision for him in the long run. If you're, if some of these schools that are in the mix and Tennessee was, I don't think this, I don't think, uh, down Hayden is going to go to Tennessee, but they've been trying to get him back down into that state to play for the Vols since the moment he arrived. So Mm -hmm. if there's an increasing level of desperation or if an sec school already lost their starting running back and basically wound up maybe trying to make a trade here, uh, (laughs) you know, Hmm, what school could you possibly be talking about? <laughs> I, 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 I'm just spitballing things out there, but I, I just, you know, maybe that's too much analysis of a decision that perhaps wasn't all that hard for him. If they're, if the if the size of the bags got larger and larger, and you were still stuck in the third role, and you think that your ceiling's better, like that, maybe is not that hard. I, I don't know. I, I, only he can answer that. And he doesn't even have to. Like it's his decision, and I don't. I, I like I've said it a couple times already. I don't fault him for it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just didn't think that it was going to be coming. And and certainly, we know that it's been talked about as a possibility for a long time. But it just it didn't seem like it was quite over the hump to that point. Yeah, I I, I think it's also important maybe to like try to put your feet in his shoes for a second here, and like the 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 red shirt thing never made much sense to me. Um, but as you said, like he, every, the times we got to ask him about it, he said, I I was on board with the decision. I think you could tell like he didn't love it, but I think he maybe understood it. Um, or like the long-term view of it perhaps, but then you get into this season and like all of a sudden your, your status hasn't changed much. Cause they went out and got another really good running back in the room. Like if, if the, if the payoff at the end of red shirt, was going to be like either your running back one, because Travion Henderson and Mayan Williams went to the NFL or, you know, Travion decides to come back and you're running back too, which is still drastically different from what Maya was last year. Like that, that payoff maybe is worth it. I, I don't know, or at least helps you accept what your role was last year. But then that wasn't the case. So like, I, I, again, don't fault him either. If, if um, he didn't necessarily want to find himself in that position again, because, because even though he has this extra year of eligibility available to him, I, I think I'd still be surprised if he uses it. Um, Cause I think he's a good player. And if he has two productive seasons, um. Then, then I, I don't know. Oh, I guess that would be it. Then. <laughs> that, no, I mean, it, he this if if he has one of those seasons this year and then the one after that, there would still be an opportunity for him. Like that's yeah, three. So right. he, you know, it's not it's not 1993 anymore. That's the part <laughs> that d- didn't make sense to me. Like you were going to get no one is going to get five years of Dallin Hayden if he's living up to the potential that he's already flashed in games for Ohio right. State. Like he, that's, I don't, I don't want to relitigate it again. I just found it to be the one of the most puzzling roster management choices that they made last year. Like I don't, I didn't understand the upside for anybody. Right. I mean, maybe, maybe I understand a little bit if Dallin Hayden wants to retain flexibility and options for his future. And to some extent, you could also apply that to Ohio State. But if what we're talking about is true about him being an NFL caliber running back down the road, which I think he absolutely is, he's not going to stay in college for five years. He's just not. And at that position, you're continuing to recruit four star and above talent at Ohio State, the Cadillac position, as they've all you know liked to call it, dating back you know dozens of years now. Like, I, it didn't seem like something that made any real sense and had actual long-term value for anybody. Right, you know, I I do agree with that, but I, but I also like I I don't know that I'm sitting here thinking to myself either that 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 decision is something that has led Dallin Hayden to make this decision. Right, I, I actually think had he not registered it last year and only had two more years of eligibility left, it was like guaranteed that one of them he was going to be the third running back here that probably is more pressure to want to leave than than Mm -hmm. less um so like i don't i I think it's like two separate conversations like that was weird 
I don't think it's what pushed him out the door necessarily, or it wasn't like the main reason. I don't, I don't think, I, I think it's still like a playing time issue either way. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that not redshirting him last year avoids this conversation. I think, I think we're still having this conversation and perhaps even having it like a little bit louder um, have, if he was in a position where he only, only had two years left. Um, so I don't, I, I don't know. It, it was strange. Like he definitely could have helped them last year. I, I think, and I think he could have helped them this year. Like I, I'm on record saying I think they're going to run the ball a whole lot. I think they're going to need three running backs over the course of the season, and that's not like predicting injuries. That's just me predicting that I think they're going to run it a lot, and, and it helps you to spread the ball around to make sure that Travion and Quinshawn are at their freshest at the end of the year when it matters most, or at their freshest for the the three biggest games of the year plus whatever comes in the postseason. We, we know what those games are. Um, so, but and now I think they probably need to find somebody who they can reliably believe on believe in to sh- shoulder some sort of workload like I, I don't as much as I like the upside of James Peoples and Sam Williams Dixon I don't I don't know that I want to have had either one of those guys is running back three right now so I think they do need to do something here and, and try to find a player that has some experience somewhere in college football that can be the third guy in the system and and I understand that that's not the most con- compelling sales pitch but it probably is to some guys who are at some lower level, level programs who might be interested in going to help a team like Ohio State chase a national championship, even if it means sacrificing some touches. So um, I, I I would expect Ohio State to do that now at this point um, when the when the window officially opens in a couple of days or I guess next week. Um, so I, I, that suddenly becomes a need for them now when I, I wasn't necessarily looking at it to be one for them. Yeah, and, and we know that there has been at least uh, at least one – crystal ball out there for another speaking of transfer and tampering Tuesday on the podcast daily yeah projections that there may be uh, a transfer out there who already has Ohio State in mind or would like to jump in the mix and maybe some of these dominoes were already in motion uh, even if we weren't expecting it to happen at this exact juncture but when you when you look at that bill like the overhaul of this room happened in a real hurry yeah, it, it's pretty wild to look at this depth chart compared to what I don't know on November twenty eighth or something twenty ninth, December first. What with still the possibility that Chip Trainum could come back, Mayan Williams could have come back, Travion Henderson could have come back, Dallin Hayden looked like he was coming back, and now other than Travion, they're all gone, and Quinshawn Judkins is here. James People and Sam Williams Dixon have arrived. Like. And Tony Alford is gone, and Carlos Lachlan has taken over that as that group as the position coach. Like, that's pretty dramatic, especially for something where we're talking about Ohio State again wanting to probably run the football a lot more. How they're doing that and who they're doing it with is very different, very, very different than five months ago. Yeah, um, it is. It's pretty crazy. I, I think, like, <clears throat> again, I'm not, I'm not. I hope this doesn't come off the wrong way. I th- I think like the running back position is maybe the easiest to try to retool if you have to do it in the off season. Um, but you want to make sure you have star power, especially a place like Ohio State. And they definitely have it with Travion and, and Quinchon. Um, but you want to have depth, and the depth looks drastically different um, than we expected it to look like this year. I don't I don't know that I think that means it's bad as long as they address it um, with with an addition here um, in the second portal window. But yeah, it's not. I, I had a hard time like wrapping my mind around last year, like toward the end of last year, like what exactly Ohio State's hopes and dreams were for the were for the position in terms of like who might come back and what this room might look like. Um I bet you any amount of money it wasn't it wasn't this. <laughs> but um I, I still think they're in an okay spot. Um the, the player, by the way, that we were alluding to is um Kyron Lynch Adams at UMass, um, who's from Ohio, has also played at Rutgers was it a thousand yard rusher last year but like that's that's a guy who had like 200 something touches last year right if that guy decides he wants to come to ohio state he's getting less Not than that. half that less than half that i would i would think um but I, I i actually do think there's probably the number i had in my mind like that i felt like Dallin hayden might get this year is like 100 touches like close to 100 touches so i think that's probably what you're trying to sell if you're ohio state to whoever might be out there whether it's lynch adams or, or, or somebody else um but yeah it is uh it is a vastly different looking room than we probably thought it was going to be what four months ago. It's kind of crazy. Well, we'll get a look at uh, what it's like the current, current iteration of it. We have uh, an open practice window on Friday and then the spring game of course is Saturday. Uh, So the final week of camp uh, coverage ramping up here, got it off to uh, a bit more of a, 
aggressive start to the week than I thought. Yeah. Um, we're going to be back in Roosters later on today, Tuesday. Uh, and then Ryan Day and Carlos Lachlan will be talking on Wednesday. So maybe there'll be some more down Hayden conversation uh, along with uh, getting ready for the spring game at that point as well. So uh, stick with us all week on the podcast and on the podcast daily uh, as we cover Ohio State to the best of our abilities before they head into the offseason. He is Bill Landis. I am Austin Ward. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you later.